And good morning and welcome to episode 23 of Talking to Artists, uh, a podcast that is designed to talk to artists who understand the work and the energy it takes to create something beautiful, but also the business know-how and the savvy to get it out into the world, which is really important. Uh, the podcast is designed for artists to learn from other artists because I'm a huge fan of, uh, of believing in sharing knowledge so that we can all succeed and, uh, and kind of all benefit from that collective wisdom. Um, as well as for collectors who are interested in trying to figure out what goes on behind the scenes with artists um, and basically anybody else who really cares what happens and how the inspiration is uh, is kind of formed. So a couple of things that I want to talk to you about today, news. Uh, first of all, Vicki Crothers was on my show a few weeks ago. She was talking then about actually uh, doing an online store with Prince. Her store is open, I believe, as of yesterday. So I encourage you to go and check that out. That's Vicki Crothers. She does the beautiful, bright pieces. Um, I have actually, through Art Alchemy, realized something I've been working on for about a year, which is a, a new show. Instead of the Square Art Show, it's called Pi Art Squared, All the Worker Circles. Um, and thanks to our sponsor, Rustic Burl, we were actually make, able to make that um, actually happen. So the panels are now in the artist's hands. We've got 26 artists, I think, that are participating, over 100 pieces. So really excited to see what's going to happen. This is kind of a pilot project and it will be something that happens yearly. Um, and at the same time, my sister who does Art Alchemy on the West Coast in Comox is actually just about to do her square foot show, which also will be online. So stay posted for that. Um, one of a kind, I'm sure we'll talk about because Eleanor is doing that as well. And one other thing is that Angela Lane, encaustic artist and my partner in Creative Adventures, um, we're actually going to be working on trying to see if we can actually create something that would be um, able to be delivered online. We originally weren't so keen on that, but uh, now that, of course, we're going to be <laughs> isolated for a lot longer, I think we're kind of going to move forward with that. Anyway, thank you for listening to my intro, and I'm very excited to uh, welcome Eleanor Loudon, and I'm going to uh, accept uh, love Eleanor's work, so I'm really excited to talk to her, and uh, especially on a gray day. Hey, how are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? Good. No problems connecting. Not not so far. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And I love that beautiful, joyful piece you have behind me, behind uh, you. It's, it's uh, not as far along as I was hoping, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that always the way? Yeah. I don't know. I, I often never know until I come back in the next day if it's actually done or not. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly So anyway, true. I did a bit of an introduction to you about uh, okay. if you can introduce yourself better than I can, but um, I understand we're both alumni of uh, the Bachelor of Fine Arts program at Western yeah. University, where there were, in my day, about six people a year that graduated, so pretty mm -hmm. tight elite group. <laughs> were you in the ATCO trailers down at the bottom of the hill? Oh, yeah, yeah. and when everybody <laughs> used the, the kiln, there'd be like two and a half feet of smoke in all the hallways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little sketchy. <laughs> It was a little sketchy, but you know, it, it's funny because I think it's actually formed my preferred environment to create art because I find yeah. I don't create as well in a really clean, pristine environment. It has to be kind of a bit messy and crazy and chaotic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Have you seen the new building at Western? Yeah. Because yeah. my, uh, my daughter, one of my daughter's friends was looking at doing a fine arts program and I'm like, I want to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You may think differently about working in, uh, in cramped, leaky places if you went to school there. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially because I did a lot of printmaking and I love the printmaking department and it's huge and it's yeah. so very safe. Oh, <laughs> too, oh <right>? yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing yeah. like living on the edge though. <laughs> I know, but you know, it didn't, it, it doesn't make you feel a little bit like, you know, those kind of crazy places in, I don't know, the Mamatra or off New York where it was like a little bit sketchy and yes. just felt like you were creating something really, I don't know, interesting and different, especially at Western where so much of it is about the business school and engineering and yeah, non-art They, didn't, they didn't fund the art school nearly as well as Ivy. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> well, it's funny because every year they used to ask me for money, right? Like as they always do, they go after your alumni. And, don't, right. and I said, can you guarantee me that not a single penny would go to the biz school and I wanted to go to fine arts? And they're like, well, we can't really do that because we put the money where it's needed. I'm like, exactly. It's needed. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, in the end, it's why, so my husband and I um, developed a scholarship for the fine arts program at Western for fourth year oh. students to help them with their marketing. And the reason I did that really was because it was the only way that I could control that the money was actually going to go and support the fine arts department. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. That's good. Which was kind of fun. That was nice that you did that. 
Well, I was desperately poor in a very rich school, so yeah. <laughs> I needed to help. Yeah. And I think it's good to kind of give back where you can, you know? Yeah, that's so. nice. Good. Anyway, I'm so glad you could join us today, especially because it's kind of a gray day, and I always love your bright and cheerful <laughs> colors and patterns and stuff. But maybe yeah. you can talk a little bit about um, sort of your work kind of inspiration or how you work. I know you do a lot of in kind of patterns and repetition, and mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an interesting uh, way to approach it. Yeah, I, I it, it struck me about 20 years ago that that's really what, what inspires me is seeing multiples of things like Muskoka chairs lined up. Or uh, at one point I walked by a garage and it had three of those old push mowers lined up against each other. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have to paint it. And somebody said, <laughs> well, why don't you just find an object that you like and repeat it a bunch of times? <laughs> I thought, well, that would be easier. But I, yeah. like the fa I like the surprise of finding things that are lined up, like Coke cans lined up on a counter or a bunch of candies thrown on a table or that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So um, the Umbrellas series, so I do work in a number of series, and the Umbrella series I started about 10 years ago, and that was one day, I was living in Calgary at the time that I came to Toronto and I was outside of the AGO and it was drizzling a little bit and there were three women standing with umbrellas in their hands and I thought again it's a series of something patterns repetitive um, objects and I took a photo and I went and painted that and I haven't stopped and I do actually make up the people that I paint with umbrellas now it's sort of um, out of my head and I position them where I want on the canvas and and I mm -hmm. use different colors to um, paint the umbrellas and the polka dots and whatever patterns are going on in my head um, yeah I do like I, I think that umbrellas is the first um, is the first art of yours that I kind of recognized yeah uh, and was definitely was drawn to but the other thing I did like is even though you definitely have that pattern of the kind of the people and the space between the people I like the fact that you have you know people that are taller and shorter and chubbier and pairs and like so that they each even though they're obviously not portraits of people they definitely have that individuality which makes it really interesting yeah I did do a lot of paintings of people without umbrellas like I'd go to Grand Central Station in New York and I'd watch people coming and going and and uh, I'd paint just people coming and going and I'd take photos and I'd take this person from that photo and this person from that photo and I just kind of make my own little group with my own little crowd of people but I was fascinated about the fact that they never really connected with each other yet they're walking right past each other it's it's a fascinating yeah. thing to watch I was in um, a mall one day and I was on my phone of course my head was down and I looked up and there was somebody that I hadn't seen in 30 years that just happened to be walking past me. And I went, oh, my God, like, <laughs> we're so focused on our phones. And we're so like in our own heads all the time that we don't yeah. actually see the people that are around us. So it's uh, what well, and I remember um, I was quite a fan of psychology. And they said something about the larger the city you live in, the more you have to do that to sort of stay sane. Otherwise, you'll go crazy if you actually mentally acknowledge all the people that are around you. But yeah. I do suspect we've taken that a little step too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And especially now with wearing masks, you only see half their face. And uh -huh. so you might not recognize them. I walked past somebody the other day that I knew and she looked at me in the eye and I had a mask on and she like didn't yeah. know it was me. And I, of course, you can't yell with a mask on. Very well. <laughs> well, and then on top of that, too, I don't know about you, but I haven't had my hair done in about six months. I went to see Mary Cosmos yesterday. And I'm like, oh my God, her hair is stunning, but it's oh, it's silver and white now, right? Not yeah. dark. Oh, so, yeah. We, when you get that, plus the mask and the glasses, like we're all incognito. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully we all stay healthy because of it. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I hope so. But it definitely yeah. is weird. Like you realize too how much you you rely on not only just the eyes, but the whole facial expression. You know, if you're delivering a piece of art or talking to someone to be able to gauge their, you know, Do their interest like? and their, yeah, and also just their mental health and how are they connected and what's the in initial reaction of a piece. And I find it's it's a bit challenging when you sort of yeah. lose some of that. When they don't like rush over and give you a big hug. Oh, I just love this painting. <laughs> yeah, they wave like, thanks. I'm like, yeah. oh, that just feels <laughs> like a letdown, you know? I want you to love the piece. I want you I to hug me and yeah. have a glass of wine together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, uh, but, yeah, I do miss that. I miss, I miss that uh, connection with buyers and I miss, you know, there's a lot though that's changed 
for the good too. I think people are becoming yeah. more um, used to buying things online, seeing work online and saying, I like that. And I, I want that. Um, mm -hmm. the, the biggest part, the biggest challenge I think is, is not really knowing how big it is, especially when you're posting on Instagram, everything's sort of two inches square. <laughs> but when they see it, it's like, oh, yeah. that's only six inches by six inches. Oh, okay. I thought it was bigger than that. <laughs> well, I think uh, Lori Mirabelli does a good job of that because almost all of her paintings, she has herself in the paintings. Yeah. And at, yeah. at first I kind of thought, wow, you must be really organized to be able to get your shit together to photograph all your paintings with you in, in them. Yeah. But I think it definitely does help, especially with some of hers are really large, to be able to kind of get that feeling of scope. Yeah. And I see a lot more people using the art rooms and yeah. apps like that that kind of help too. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does but, help for sure. But uh, yeah. it, 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 it also looks so nice and clean when you just have this little square on Instagram. It's just an image too, right? So I like, I well, like especially to look with, that. Especially with a larger piece. Like I think you just posted one recently, which I liked, which is this painting. And then you had a couple of really close-ups where you could really see the juicy brushwork and stuff. Because that's, again, yeah. something you totally see in person. Yeah. That no matter how well you photograph, I just don't think that comes through very well. I, I think I got that idea from you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> no, it's true. Like you, you, you follow artists on Instagram, right? And you get ideas from other artists about totally. how to show your work. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I think there's definitely, uh, there's definitely some benefit to that. And even um, doing videos, you know, like uh, – you know, with encaustic artists too, it's very, it's hard to photograph the depth. And so by doing videos and starting to see some of the stuff you're doing, yeah, um, it's still hard. I find that because I work flat, I have a really hard time. I'm supposed to be working on a video so I can kind of create this little movie about what I do. And right. I really seem to be stymied with how to actually create it because I work over top of my art. So I can't really, I'm in the way. Yeah. So, and then someone said, well, you should just put it on the wall. I'm like, I could, but then that's not really how I paint. So it's not really representational of what I'm doing. I don't what, know. What if you got one of those GoPros and wrapped it around your forehead and then filmed from... Oh, yeah, right? that's a good idea. Then you could... <laughs> then you could... <laughs> as long as your forehead is looking at what you're painting. Yeah. I have to really yeah. pay attention. I don't yeah. kind of like wander around. <laughs> yeah. Get distracted. Yeah. I don't know. So, I, it, it is a challenge doing all that. Yeah. And I think it really helps people because every time you do post a video, you get a lot of response from people that, I mean, it's in my own head. So I, I just, I just know what I'm doing and I just assume everybody else knows exactly what I'm doing, but they don't. So. Yeah. Well, and I think too, for people that aren't creative and aren't artists, I think they have a hard time really. So, so, but how would you come up with the idea and why yeah. did you put this color here? And, and, and it's interesting when you actually have to are forced to articulate, it's really hard to kind of go, well, I put the color there because it felt it needed it. Like, and I can't always tell you why. Right. So I, I, when I lived in Calgary, I used to teach a lot and I would do de painting demos in front of the class. And I would actually talk about, I'm now going to use pink here. I'm now going to paint white here. And I'm now going to do this. And I think actually explaining to people those things that you just do by intuition when you're painting alone, <laughs> I think by yeah. actually having to put words to it actually helped me understand a little more about why I'm doing certain things. Yeah. Because they would ask, well, why are you putting white there? Why are you putting pink there? And then you explain to them, well, this is why. But when you're yeah. in your own head and you're painting by yourself, you don't have to tell anybody anything. <laughs> That's right. And sometimes you don't want to. No. No. Especially when you, you want to know what's going on in my head. don't like what you did and you're going to yeah. change it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that was an unmitigated stuff. disaster. We're yeah. not going to talk about that. <laughs> I need my sander and I need my gesso. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Start again. And so... Do you still do workshops? Like you were saying, you, you, so you were teaching, but not formally teaching. Were you just doing kind of workshops or were you teaching as a teacher? No, or? I, well, no, I was not teaching as a teacher. I was teaching regular weekly classes at um, the Calgary School of Art and at the University of Calgary. So I was doing oh, cool. um, a drawing class at the University of Calgary and I was painting, I was teaching um, acrylic and watercolor classes at the Calgary School of Art and through other venues as well. So I've done a bunch of different mm. things. I, I haven't really been doing any teaching. I've done a few workshops since I came back to Toronto six years ago. Um, I just kind of got to the point where I thought I would rather spend my time painting than thinking about what my lesson plans are and what I'm going to be doing next week. And 
So it takes a lot of mental energy. Yeah, and I felt like I, I was em emptying out my bucket every week and telling everybody everything I knew. And part of me wanted to just fill my bucket again. So I'm not yeah. ready to get back into anything regular teaching wise, but uh, you know, here and there I will. It's just not possible right now, really. Well, no, but I was just going to say, I'm surprised that since you've got that background and that history and the ability to know that you can teach that you wouldn't during COVID have done something like, like a lot of artists I see now are teaching. I personally have, no patience for teaching, so I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hand-holding. No, it's, it's, it's good. Like, it's good to teach because, like I said to you earlier, when I teach, I'm actually learning myself. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I put pink there. So, you know, you're yeah. putting into words why, why. And then when you're looking at other people's work, you're actually problem-solving for them, too, which teaches you something, right? So yeah, and I, I think there's definitely something to that because I, I think sometimes your world can get too small as well yeah. if you're not careful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very small right now. Me and my yeah. dog Rigby are <laughs> happily painting away every day. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just grateful. I've got uh, well art alchemy because you know, we've got yeah. a couple of artists there and it's pretty unusual if there's more than one or two of us there at a time, but you know, it's, it's so difficult because it's just like, Oh, new person to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, you, but you definitely sort of share kind of ideas or thoughts or it's nice to get that, I find the critical feedback when you kind of know something's not quite working. It's yeah. really, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. But, it's, it's nice to have a committee just, you know, for, mm -hmm. for feedback here and there. <laughs> well, especially I had, I had one recently, which I really, really was happy with it. And I really love this one particular area of the painting. Like a, it's sort of what I had wanted to do and I was able to visualize it and I was able to actually execute. So I asked uh, Karen Jeffrey, who's in my studio, what she thought. She goes, yeah, I really like it, but that bottom corner is really bothering me. And I'm like, well, that's the part I really like. Oh. Went to Lisa Hickey and she's like, yeah, no, I think it's really great, but there's something about that bottom corner. And I'm like, wow, that's not good. So then I reached out to my sister hoping somebody would support me. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you know, Kate, the bottom corner, you have to resolve it. And I'm like, okay. Oh, turn it around. Turn it upside yeah. down. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, I think it was just. I think it was just too. It, it that was working, but none of the other part was. So I think it was actually more of a combination of the fact that I had taken it too far in other areas. But right. anyway, it was interesting, and in the end, I think I agree with all three of them. It was stronger when I resolved that bottom corner. <laughs> right. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you are too close to your own work to see mm -hmm. the things that are bothering everybody else or whatever. If they. Are, yeah. If they are there. Yeah. Totally. Good. So, so how do you kind of um, start your work? Like, how do you have a sense of what you're going to produce? It? Like, I mean, obviously, if you're going to do umbrellas, you have to have a sense of that you're doing that. But is it kind of intuitive? Or do you map it out first? Or uh, I do have a sketchbook. And I do a lot of work in my sketchbook. Um, sometimes I, j I just feel if I take it to the sketchbook first, I take all that initial impetus and energy and inspiration and I leave it in the sketchbook and I can't translate it into the I'm always afraid of that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do work in my sketchbook. Sometimes there, it's just to draw something small in my sketchbook and I never goes to a painting. Um, like I'll take it and do plein air sketches and that kind of thing. And that's, fun it's fun to have a record of where I've been throughout the year and places I've seen and sketched and that kind of thing and sometimes they become paintings and sometimes they don't but mm -hmm. if I feel like painting it it depends on how big I feel so some days I just want to paint a giant painting and some days I just feel like doing something small and it I if I know myself well enough then I do a better painting if I listen to what size I'm going to paint that day and then right. Um, I like I, I've done all these series so the flowers started during the spring during COVID I do not have a garden and so I thought I love gardening but I live in a condo and I have balconies so I have little pots but I don't have a garden and I thought mm -hmm. you know what I, I I think what I'll do and I never thought I'd paint flowers but here I was painting <laughs> these flowers and it was so much fun because I don't even know what kind of flowers half of them are but they were just fun to create and make well and the wonderful thing about nature too is they don't worry about this color goes with that color i mean it gives it leaves yeah. you such open latitude to what do whatever combinations you want right yeah and it's not a portrait of somebody so no no one's feelings are hurt <laughs> right? that, doesn't, that doesn't look like aunt betty <laughs> yeah. yeah that's not my house yeah that's right that's right so yeah it, it was 
almost as abstract as I can get. I do play with abstracts occasionally, just especially in the beginning of COVID when I, I was trying to make sense of the world. Like, where are we going and what's happening and how long is this going on for? And are, are we safe? Where, you know, all those questions mm-hmm. were going through everybody's head. And I, yeah. Yeah, that, well, I'm stuck in here, so I'll just do whatever I feel like. And all the galleries had shut down, so nobody really wanted new work, and there was no shows to paint for, and a bit of a yeah, you know, self-searching kind of thing. So well, and I think you're right, though. It is when you don't have that constant deadline of because we both uh, just would have just finished the artist project. Yeah, and normally after that, you know, you would have been kind of rolling into the next show, the summer shows, the commissions, all that kind of stuff. But then everything stopped. So yeah. you know. Theoretically, it was a, a time to sort of just play because you knew that you didn't have to feed the machine, as it were. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Everything really shut down. But then people slowly started reaching out, and I had just switched over last fall my um, website so that you could purchase art directly off my website, and mm-hmm. I started getting people buying art off my web- website during COVID. And I thought, wow, like they can't go to galleries, they can't come to my shows. And they're finding me anyway. So so that was mm-hmm. kind of an interesting and exciting thing to have happen. And so uh, you're still obviously then selling work. Is all your, your work available then through your website? Mm-hmm. Well, yes. When I get around to posting new work on the website, <laughs> it's available. Yeah, It's there. This and, 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 sorry, I was just wondering, are you finding that, that, that the people that are coming to you, are there people that you've seen – previously over the years at shows and galleries and stuff or are these completely new people that you've never talked to before uh usually there's some kind of connection so it may be coming from shows it yeah it could be coming from my email list it could be mm-hmm. yeah good question that well that's what i'm finding too so it's kind of it's interesting to try and figure out so then how do you broaden that um that audience so if we kind of know that people are starting to get com- more comfortable buying in real life. And I don't, I've done a couple too, where they've sort of tagged a piece on online that they like, and then I'll do a, you know, live call or whatever, and actually show them the piece in real life and be able to go in close up so they can really get a better sense for, of it. Right. But, but I think that it certainly expands your audience, like in terms of being able to sell beyond just Toronto and the people that can walk in, you know, to the artist project and the galleries and the online stores or the yeah. outdoor yeah. shows. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get I'm, I get a lot of uh, inquiries from my Instagram. I don't have the ability for people to just click on my Instagram and buy it off of Instagram. And I know some artists do that. Um, I think you have to have but, ten thousand followers. I think. Well, then so, that's why I don't. So we'll put that out there for anybody watching this right now. <laughs> follow Eleanor Loudon and myself, and yeah. so we can get to ten thousand followers, and you can buy a hard website. <laughs> <on Instagram. laughs> okay, I didn't know that little that. That minor detail. I think, I think that's what Julia Veenstra told me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Cause she does a lot of, <laughs> she does a lot of sales off of her Instagram. Yeah. Which is but great. What I, what I do on my Instagram, um, on my, my profile or whatever, I have uh, work with an app called Instabio. Mm-hmm. And so on Instabio, I can actually have a link directly from there to my little treasures or to the current show I'm doing. So that's actually been really helpful. Oh, okay. So I'll take a look should, at that. Yeah, it's free. And, you know, so right now it links to one of a kind, my website, my Facebook page, my talking to artists, YouTube channel, a whole bunch of stuff. And oh, it's interesting okay. on the back end, you can see how many things kind of come through that, those links. Oh, that's interesting. Good. Good. So that's see, my small learn... tip for the day. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something all the time from people. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's and a I'm, great, I'm it's still a great trying idea. To this talking to artists because having listened to a number watched a number of them I'm it's great it's like being at the artist project is so great because you get to talk to other artists and get ideas and oh yeah and, and I find even outdoor shows I remember doing the um the Oakville that one day show yeah and it come it used to come right in the middle of my vacation so I was always a little bit frenzied and I remember I had this painting I packed up and as I unpacked it when I got there I'm like oh my god this painting wasn't even finished yet <laughs> and uh, I remember hanging it and talking to Karen Taylor and she's like yeah no no I think to me I think it's really working it's very loose but it's really working and of course invariably that's the first one that sells right <laughs> but it, it, you know I, I totally miss that kind of feedback and yeah confirmation confirmation sometimes <laughs> that you're, right. you're on the right, right track yeah. I have 
I have not got the guts to do the outdoor shows. I, I, I just envision these torrential downpours and high winds and Oh, it's all part of the fun. Oh, you know it? what? Okay. You know what, Eleanor? I have to say, after doing uploading all my stuff to the One of a Kind and Toronto oh, Outdoor and all that stuff, I am never, never, never complaining about having to schlep my stuff across the park anymore. It's so much lot. easier. That was a lot of work, wasn't it? I yeah I opened up a Shopify my like a Shopify account so that I could sync with the One of a Kind, and that was a lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of work, and yeah. my store, for whatever reason, because I um you know I could have worked with. I probably should have worked with Digital Main Street, and they actually do it all for you. Well, but, you know, I did work con- with Digital Main Street, but I still had to oh. upload everything. Well, I found for me, I, I, was, I guess that my web hooks or something weren't right, and then something oh. happened. So I had both weekends, my store was not live. So oh. I've been kind of afraid to promote it because I'm like, well, I don't want to drive people there. And then it's like, well, you – like, for example, for some reason, only one of my paintings showed up last weekend. So it's like, well – Um, It's kind of, uh, I think, I mean, I think everybody's still trying to work out the kinks and stuff, but, um, and I think that what happened. I made a big announcement that it was going to open at 10 o'clock on whatever day it was supposed to start. And it actually didn't open until noon. And then the website was so overwhelmed, it crashed. So it wasn't even open that day. And mine, I did, I was missing something. So mine wasn't open anyway. And it was so funny because I was talking to Angela and she's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm going to wait, you know, until I really know the store is working before I promote it. And I'm like, yeah, that was smart. (laughs) I should have done that. (laughs) And and honestly, the one of a kind isn't usually until the end of November, right? Yeah. So people are probably yeah. not even thinking about it yet. Yeah, so I, think I think you're right. I think it's. So how are you, what are you doing then with uh, having this digital show, which you've obviously, but well, both of us put a lot of time and energy into, and there's obviously lots of um, original art there, which is hard with the search sometimes to sort of differentiate yeah. yourself versus a lot of the other really super cool craft but yeah what are you doing to kind of stand out <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot i, did, I wanted to I, pick your brain <laughs> okay on the, the shopify website i put in as many tags as i could for each of the paintings that i and i have 80 paintings on there so wow <laughs> yeah i put in all these tags and i'm hoping that will create i don't know and i'm i will start promoting it more there's other things that i have lined up that I want to but uh, uh, and I did send out a MailChimp email about the one of a kind and I think I'll do it again closer to mm-hmm. end of November just to remind people it's still on <laughs> yeah it's gonna be on yeah. for another month so <laughs> so I think well and I, th- I think it'll get I think it'll improve as well like I think that they're always they're constantly updating and I think the search functions and stuff the search yeah. functions originally I think were a bit of a challenge because I know that if you put in art and painting you got painted vases and you know and I'm not sure they were that happy with that categorization either right right yeah um but I've had trouble even looking for things on there too like it it there's something exciting about going to the one of a kind and I've gone every year and I've never been in it but I've gone every year and sometimes Mm -hmm. more than once and walking up and down the aisles and there's just sort of a vibe and it's fun and it's you know, it's pre Christmas and everything's yeah. new and shiny and, and it's great. And it's, you know, you get in, inspiration for your own work. And um, I don't get that when I go on as a shopper. Do you know what I mean? And I, yeah, like I think what happens with a lot of the shoppers, like people I've talked to, is like, yeah. like you, they go to one of a kind every year and they know they always go and buy the lemon squares and they always buy the chocolate yeah. and they yeah. always go here. And so some of it is, it's online shopping of things that you already know that you're going to buy. So I think that the challenge I'm finding, because I've done it for two years, is how do you then entice people to look at your site when they're not specifically looking for um, right. for art or, or something? And I think that's really where it's a bit of a challenge. And, yeah, I, I mean, I I really enjoy doing it. Like, yeah, 11 days is, is long, but, you know, it's – it's your but job you, to be there and talk about your like, art for 11 days. You're also <laughs> super extroverted and, <laughs> yeah. and like tons of energy. Whereas I, like after four days of the artist project, I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> I, just, I just need to have a day in bed. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. The hour, the hours are long. I agree. But I do like those in some ways it's kind of nice when you have those down times. Right. And that's when you kind of go and visit everybody. And right. Right. I don't know. It's, it's a cool vibe and I will be back there. And I think for now it'll be a hybrid, but 
So next year, I'll try and encourage you to do the Riverdale Art Walk with us. Okay. <laughs> Your first outdoor show, because that's, that's a, okay. I'm, we're, we're hoping, fingers crossed, it's going to go next oh. year in 2021. I'll invest in, in um, rain gear, and then it's guaranteed <laughs> to be sunny. <laughs> yeah, that's what Karen Daly Taylor says. She's like, I've got my new Wellington boots, therefore it's not going to rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring an umbrella, a Macintosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's true. It's, it is. Uh, well, I guess maybe the Riverdale Art Walk might be a little easier, but the the Toronto City Hall Outdoor Fair, or whatever it's called, um, mm -hmm. parking and getting the paintings up and taking them down at night and bring them up from wherever. The yeah. Tavern well, and at, River, at Riverdale, there. we've we've typically had um, there's on-site storage, so you basically just kind of I put it into a cart and you wheel over your, all your big pieces that can go in storage overnight. That's perfect. Yeah, which is really nice. And the small pieces, yeah. you figure you can slip to your car; it's not a big deal, right? But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that certainly helps a lot. And it's a great environment, and I don't know, yeah. the people are nice. But yeah, anyway, we'll see. Might happen, might not. <laughs> yeah, and um, I guess similarly in the United States, a lot of the um, fairs have not been going on. Is that correct? Because you've done quite a few, like Chicago. Yeah. The, and the big art fair. So Chicago didn't happen. San Diego didn't happen. I don't think Santa Fe didn't happen. I wasn't doing Santa Fe, but I just talked to my friend, Mary Johnson in the U S last night. And so she has done a few shows, oh, okay. um, but most of them are kind of hybrids. And again, you know, online it's been, you know, people buy who have already seen her in, in the shows in person. I think Marjolyn Vanderhart also usually does a whole bunch of outdoor um, U S shows, which yeah. I don't think she did any of them. They're all canceled this year. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so it's everywhere, but, and there's all these people yep. that are now working from home and maybe permanently, right. Working from home mm -hmm. and they're looking at their walls going, I could use a piece of art right there. And so I, I think there's still a huge need, even a greater need if, if I can say that for art. Now oh, I remember. think for sure. Yeah. 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 So, I, so I see, again, I see some, Sorry, I see on Instagram, some of your pictures look like they're kind of at the lake. Is that uh, yeah, is up, that uh, your place? Nor Northern, on Northern Ontario. No, Ban uh, Bancroft area. Up oh, there yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Where, where yeah. are you? Uh, are you north go? of Kingston. Yeah, so oh, south okay. of Starbuck Lake. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. I, I like uh, your studio that you've um, <laughs> taken over there. That's yeah. great. <laughs> I know yeah. and it's so funny because yeah so that's my third studio now <laughs> it's, it's still not big enough but no it, it's great yeah. it's great <laughs> yeah, I'm live... going actually this weekend oh are you nice yeah it's going to be nice weather I think so yeah, yeah. so um, part of it is it's great to work but also trying to figure out with Angela if we can um, start to resurrect creative adventures oh, um, and good. try and do some yeah some online we weren't really that interested at the beginning to do the online creative adventures because the whole point was get together, drink mimosas, laugh, be creative, have a, have it as an experience. Right. Yeah. But since this is obviously um, going to last for a while, I think it's probably people are going to be looking for something that's takes them out of their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. So yeah. work on that a little bit too. Yeah. That, yeah. I, it's, it's really an opportunity. Like the whole COVID thing has been a drag for a number of reasons, not only the the health threat that it poses, mm -hmm. but the isolation, but it's created a whole pile of new ideas, new ways of doing business. And I think that's been fantastic. I think yeah. that, you know, it's like a forest fire. There's always new growth afterwards. So um, I'm not. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's, and I do think that's why it's important that the community supports the community. Like I like yeah. these initiatives, like um, artists supporting artists, um, yeah. you know, where if you sell, then you buy. Um, and I know I'm also trying to do that. I just uh, bought a piece from Kat Stambolic, which I have to still pick up. And I went to see Mary Kosovo's yesterday and bought a little six by six. And I think that also helps to share the love. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. So um, do you want to talk about the piece you've got behind you? Because I'm actually just keep looking at it. I'm curious to oh, see what you think you okay. want to do with it, it next. It was it started off in a different direction. And now it's just becoming a great big, huge garden. I was going to have it kind of more of a landscape with um, levels like the trees in the background and then something in the foreground. Um, so it's sort of midway right now. And part of me is thinking it's, it's 
always my go-to in these um, floral paintings to put pink and green. And that's where this is at right now. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I, I need to shake it up, like make some <laughs> other colors happen in there. So, so yeah, that's, that's where my head's at. But. It's it's an interesting uh, challenge that uh, I, I do the same thing. Like I have my current colors that I always I always work with and I always put on my palette. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, I'm like, you know, I think I'm not saying it's becoming formulaic, but I think I'm becoming just too comfortable with that color palette. So right. recently, red I find for me is always a bit of a challenge to work with. Like the red background, it's very strong, and I find yeah. it a bit aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, and so I sort of was trying to work on okay, all these colors I usually like, not putting them on the palette. I'm working mm -hmm. on a different color palette. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I have a, a bunch of color like uh, combinations that I've worked out in my sketchbook. But I, I, I don't know, for some reason, I still keep going back to these colors. And I think sometimes it's just it, it's just intuitive. Like, yeah, if I go to paint um, an umbrella painting, I tend to go and I always use red in them somehow. And it's like, stop, stop it. <laughs> and then the flowers, I'm always using pink. And I go, stop it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah well it's funny because i was working on something and i thought you know i really should try and work in more earth tones you know like mm -hmm. i so i brought up my the ochres and the raw umbers and all this kind of stuff and i painted for a few hours and at the end of the day they weren't even touched <laughs> they were still sitting <laughs> on my palette getting a skin on them it's just like i just couldn't bring myself to bring i've um, seen you do brown some, in my painting <laughs> i've seen you do some commissions though where you're using like black and some silver and stuff like that which is not your typical palette right and, and it's not uh, they're successful. Yeah. I think they look great. So, and well, it, it definitely I like I like that because it kind of stretches you. But mm -hmm. you know, and it's but I find I seem to have a, a line of I like I like definite color. I think I like jewel mm -hmm. tones, and so silvers and blacks and golds kind of still to me fit within that color palette. Where I have a challenge yeah. are things like um, really the browns. Yeah. I, think I, I don't. Know, I grew up a child of the seventies. I think I just became allergic to brown. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Love orange. Just don't like brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I get it I get it I was there too <laughs> yeah <laughs> lots of browns I do like bright colors though and and painting makes me happy and so somebody said to me once if all anybody knew of you was your art would they know you and I thought well I hope so I mean I hope that yeah. my personality comes through in my paintings enough so that people would say oh okay not I, th I may, think so it may not be important but it is kind of interesting but I think also it's it's the, it's a bit of therapy for the artist like I always say you know mm. fundamentally I'm a self-indulgent painter like even though I do a lot of commissions mm. I work with the colors I like I do the process I like yeah. I work with sparkly stuff with the mica because it makes me happy and you know so but that that know. makes art that other people are going to like if you like it I think it translates into work that is I like, hope so <laughs> yeah I they're going to have a lot of crap on my walls <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I find too sometimes when I do all the things that just feel super natural like the color palette the pink and the green or whatever in my flower paintings those paintings actually happen without me even working like it is supposed to be artwork we call it artwork so it should be work but it is play too and it should be fun mm -hmm. and the ones that I try hard to do something different are a struggle and they take longer and I'm yeah I find super happy I find off well I would agree I think that there's the ones that I labor over mm -hmm. and usually and I learned this really early on in doing commissions is that normally the ones I labored over were ones where half of my brain was painting and the other half of my brain was thinking, oh, they don't like that color or they want this shape or whatever. And it just became too tight and it didn't have the right energy. And so in the end, yeah. put all this time and energy and paints and supplies into a piece that just I didn't feel was that strong, you know? Right. Right. So, but I do think there's a fine line there too mm -hmm. between always doing the same thing and pushing out of your boundaries a little bit. Um, yeah. Well, and that, but, that is commission work. It's taking you sometimes out of your comfort zone to mm -hmm. do something yeah. different or do something exactly the way they want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and can so you, do you pay, can you make the chimney a two inches taller and can you put smoke coming out of the chimney? <laughs> like, okay. And then it becomes yeah. 
not a piece of art. It's like, okay, I'm just doing this for you, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, I think there's definitely some people that love the whole process of the commission, like especially people who aren't creative and they're, they're really so excited to be part of the creative process, which I think is, is cool. But sometimes as an artist, you have to say, okay, I hear what you're saying, but I have to fundamentally disagree with you because that smoke yeah. is not going to work in the chimney or whatever. Right. And I think that's part of, listening to what they want and then translating into something that ultimately is going to give them a final product that they're going to be really happy with. Yeah. And that you feel happy with. Right. Yeah. It has to be something that is, is you too, as an artist for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And something that is still fits within your body of work and looks mm -hmm. consistent and, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. but if someone came to you, for example, and said, Hey, I love your flowers. I love your roses. I really want to go through kind of this goth thing. Like, well, you do black roses. Would mm -hmm. you do them? Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> that's just a color change. Like somebody yeah. asked me if I would paint the Last Supper, and I said, "Oh, uh, no." <laughs> Somebody's already painted that, and I, yeah. I can't do that. So. Pretty sure you can't up Da Vinci. <laughs> no, no. So there's certain things I can't, I can't, I won't paint. I, I draw the line at that. Yeah. Well, I but, think there's also a difference between what you can't paint and what you're choosing not to paint. Right. Yeah. Like, cause I get the same thing where people kind of go, you know, I'd really, I love your work, you know, but I'd really like something realistic. I'm like, I can paint realistically. I'm trained as an artist, but I have no interest in doing that. So yeah, I just don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I taught uh, drawing at, at uh, the university of Calgary and I, I had people that wanted to draw like Michelangelo and I'm looking at them going, we don't have time for that. This is a 10 week class. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've never drawn before, let's just get some, you know, skills down. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it, but like, I don't know that I want to draw like or paint like Da Vinci or Michelangelo either. I, I just want to paint like me. And I think finding your own voice is like the best thing about being a painter is just knowing what, what you want to do and just being able to do what you want to do. And did you time. find, did you like intentionally try and build a look that was your voice or did you kind of go back afterwards and kind of go, Oh, I think I found my voice. I think, I think the second, I think, yeah, I, I painted enough. I was in my studio for long enough that I said, yeah, this is, this is who I am. Now it has changed. I started as a watercolor painter um, that was my first love of painting was watercolor. I learned acrylics and oils and everything else in university, but I, I chose to do watercolor and I painted and, and started my career making money doing watercolor. But then I was frustrated because I'd worked so hard on a watercolor and I'd hang it on the wall in a show next to an acrylic or an oil and it would look like so wishy-washy. <laughs> I hate that. It took me so long. And look, it just disappears on the wall. <laughs> and I like color so much. So then I decided that the problem with watercolor was the water. So I started painting watercolor without water, <laughs> just like basically hmm. right out of the tube. Those are expensive paintings because that water is really expensive. Yeah, so, I know because I see the tiny little tubes. Yeah, right? <laughs> $36. So then yeah. I thought um, the other problem that I was having was painting under glass and framing things and framing everything and having the frame chip or crack or the glass or people's break. preference of frames I guess yeah, too right say, I love the painting I hate the frame and yeah and then storing them and then you can't ship them and then galleries didn't really want them as much because of the glare and the glass and the whatever and you, mm -hmm. so I thought well okay um I started actually uh doing a process where I would mount the watercolor paper on gator board and then at, once I finished it I would seal it with um, cold wax medium which oh, cool. acts as a barrier it's like waxing your floor it provides a, a protective layer for the yeah. watercolor and it doesn't move the paint at all it doesn't smudge it it doesn't uh, re like watercolor is always resoluble so it doesn't it has to be sealed. It has to be under glass. But this cold wax medium, once it's um, sealed and it dries, then it acts like a, a glass protective layer would. And so, how and, do you do that? Is that is like I, I'm familiar with the cold wax medium because my sister uses it, but it looks almost like it's really 
thick, almost like a Vaseline. Like, do you? It is, yeah. But a then I dry it for your fingers, or I take cheesecloth and I rub it in circles all over oh. the surface of the paint painting, and uh, and then it dries and it hardens, and it's literally like floor wax. Like it hardens like floor wax. It doesn't yellow, and the colors actually look really rich and they're beautiful. And then oh, you can frame. Be, it. I, I'd be fun. Frame sorry, just sorry. My, bra my brain was just thinking, oh, I think I'd like to try that on one of mine. That'd be kind of a cool thing. Yeah. I think I have some of her cold wax medium she left here, so maybe I'll steal some of it. Sorry, Helen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good. And uh, I, so I really like doing that for a while. And then I could just use a simple frame or use a frame with a linen liner. And it looks like an oil painting, really, mm -hmm. when you're hanging it. Mm -hmm. And there's no glass. There's no glare. It's a lot easier to ship because when you mount the paper on gator board, it's light. It's not heavy. You can mount it on masonite or something else too, but the gator board's nice and light and does the job. Um, you have to be careful when you're mounting it though, that you don't get air bubbles underneath. Um, right. So, and so you move from are... there to acrylic, like you work in acrylic yeah. now, right? Yeah. 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 And I don't really do very much in watercolor at all. I do love the medium. Still, but I don't do anything in terms of commercial work with um, watercolor. So that's my evolution. And as a as an acrylic painter, I still utilize a lot of the things that when you're working with watercolor, you have to work from light to dark. And so with my acrylics, I still kind of do that. I work a lot from light to dark. So I save the brightness of the canvas and I let that pop through. So you've probably seen when you look closely at my work, there's a lot of pink that comes through because I usually put a layer of, um, of quinacridone pink or quinacridone red down before I start the painting. And, and I like to have some of that peek through. So mm -hmm. it's a, I it like is, that. I like that technique too. Yeah. I don't it use is. it, but I liked it in other artists. Uh, <clears throat> so it, to me, that's uh, just a remnant of how I used to paint in watercolor having the light to dark application of paint as opposed to the dark to light. But, but now that I am an acrylic painter, I like also being able to go back in and put white on top of something, which you can't do in watercolor very easily. So. Yeah. Watercolor is always fascinating to me. I think because of the discipline involved, like the discipline and the planning for exactly that reason, like you have to know really, it seems to me like you have to really know what you're going to do before mm -hmm. you start, because you have to sort of figure out where your lights, where your highlights going to be to leave those. Yeah. And, save uh, the white of the save the white of the paper if you need. Yeah, so just before just before COVID hit, I was actually really going to take a watercolor class because I thought, well, that's just mm -hmm. it's something that's so different from what I currently do. I think the discipline of it would be interesting, but I was also trying to figure out how to get that um, sort of like you know obviously with the wood grain on the panel, but to try and reproduce some of that in an interesting way on canvas, so I could start to work on canvas versus the panels, mm -hmm. and so yeah, so I did some, and sometimes they were successful, and sometimes they weren't because my watercolor techniques are not very good obviously <laughs> <laughs> so I have to work on that <laughs> well it, it is a it is a comfort zone like it's a, but it's like what kind of brushes you like to use or what kind of palette knife you like to use and and totally. if you switch it up it's like this doesn't feel right <laughs> I know and I have so many talent palette knives and I have people like Karen works on these those rubber knives and my sister works on these big huge ones and like oh you should try this and I'm like I should and I go and buy them and I'm like I go back to the same one yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's yeah. a comfort zone, I guess. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's certain, there's certain things that we go back to for sure. But like I said, I have evolved through this whole thing where I was painting in watercolor and the, you know, traditional misty, loose, uh, pastel like watercolors to now these bright, bold colors. And this feels <laughs> like me. So I think it took me through all that to get to this. Mm hmm my, yeah, grandmother, my grandmother was a watercolor painter. And I think that's why I chose to start with that medium. But, yeah. yeah, my grandmother did. Well, she did a lot of kind of mixed media and oils. And I think she did a bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, she did do some watercolor. And then she also did like fashion design illustrations and stuff. Oh, so cool. her work, it's very kind of, well, yeah, I guess you have a long career. You do a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. 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 So, but it's cool to sometimes, sometimes I look at her pieces too and see all of the underpainting, the gesso and the, um, kind of the building of the modeling paste. I don't know what she, exactly what she used, but uh, mm -hmm. to kind of create that 3D look, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's neat. Did you yeah. paint okay. with her? Oh, you have another question. No, no. She, um, you know, she was a little bit of a classic um, 
artist who wanted to keep everything to herself. Like I remember as a kid, because my sister and I obviously both were artists mm -hmm. and, um, and she, you know, she was the only thing she ever taught me was what color to put my paints on in the palette. Like that, that goes from like really the colors of the rainbow goes around like that. And right. um, I remember, you know, we used to paint her pictures for Christmas or whatever like that. And she would criticize the hell out of them. Like she was just not willing to share, which was wow. really too bad. Wow. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you, you still probably absorbed some information from her, whether she was willing to share or not. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you do. I think that the biggest thing that she, the biggest, hugest legacy that she left really was um, as a child, knowing that you could actually be an artist as a career. Like you right. could do that and yeah. you know somebody who can do it and who's been successful and who sells and produces. So I think really that's probably the biggest gift that she gave uh, to yeah. both Helen and I. Yeah, so, that is Which nice. is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're coming down to the end. So I'm going to ask okay. you my Kate's quickies, which um, okay. given the fact that you've got, talked about color, if you could only work in one color, what would it be? Like what's your favorite oh color? You know what? I think <laughs> I, it's so weird, but I think it would be yellow. And I have I love a funny yellow too. I have a funny <laughs> you tell me. story about this because when I was in, uh, when I was four, I went to kindergarten in Montreal. Not kindergarten; it was nursery school. May have been hmm. three. I was really young, and it was everybody was French speaking, and I was not, and I'm still very much not a French speaker. <laughs> and so I sat there, and I didn't know what was going on. But then we got to color one day, and she passed around a piece of newsprint to each of the kids and there's probably 12 of us in the class sitting in a circle and then she gave us each a crayon and I got the yellow crayon have you ever tried to draw a drawing on a piece of newsprint with a yellow crayon <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's like, hence the watercolor paleness <laughs> I don't know I think I think it was that's where I said no I want to paint bold colors I think I knew even then that I needed yeah I needed to get away so my, you couldn't see anything that I drew because I had the <laughs> yellow crayon. <laughs> that anyway. seems a bit mean. Yeah, but I do love the color yellow. <laughs> I, I do too. Being mean. I don't think she figured that there was a problem with yellow. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, we didn't communicate very well. So yeah, I guess yeah. not. Okay, yeah. next question. Uh, once COVID is allows us to travel, where would your destination of choice be for your I art think, inspiration oh i love new york city but i think i'd love to go to europe i think that's and anywhere italy portugal mm -hmm. france anywhere yeah 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 the colors i mean yeah. I, I found too this colors of like southern spain they're just like our colors <laughs> yeah you know? oh for sure yeah yeah, yeah I okay really, and then I, Sorry, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. I yeah, just want to make sure I can catch it. But so then the last question I always like to ask people is, what's your big hairy ass goal? If <laughs> money and time and everything was no object, what would, would you do? For my art, I think I would love a giant studio somewhere where I could actually work on a bigger canvas. But I can't, I live in a one bedroom condo and my studio is up two flights of stairs. So I'm in a stacked townhouse and I have to mm -hmm. take it up one flight of stairs and then another flight of stairs. And I just, I, I can't work very big. So yeah, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be really fun. That'd be cool. I know. It's, it's, a, it's a, one of those dreams. I think when it's something like, when I look at Claire Desjardins and look at her studio, I'm like, oh, it's yeah. so huge and it's yeah. so bright. She's got like seven tables working at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that'd be, that'd be fun. pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, give everybody your Instagram handle just so people can follow you. It's at Eleanor Loudon. Okay, and she's uh, you're out doing the one of a kind right now. Yeah. Your art's available on your website, yeah. so check it out. And um, it was fabulous to talk to you. Thank you yeah, so much for your nice time to today, see you, Kate. Thanks so much. Yeah, you too. Okay, okay we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was great. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to log off soon. Next week, we've got Michael Sachter, who's going to talk about his photography. But he's also working on some cool projects that are supporting and, and um, thanking frontline workers. And he's also done some work with uh, Cam H on mental health, which I think you'll find really fascinating. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. This will be on my Facebook page and youtube.com slash Kate Taylor Art. So I encourage you to go and subscribe. And have a fabulous day.